us engineering students were always looking at that next thing that next homework assignment we need to do that next midterm we got to study for that next project that we need to get done but we rarely ever take a chance to step back and just look at how far we've come what is up people of the internet my name is avery and i'm a fourth year electrical engineering student at the university of british columbia and throughout my undergrad so far i've been no stranger to feeling like an imposter in many of the cohorts that i've been in holy shit, the person next to me had a 100 percent average from high school how did i get into engineering here holy shit, this person is a team lead on their design team and they're only in second year what do i have to offer holy shit, this person got an internship at a huge tech company i haven't even gotten a job yet so if you're a fellow engineering student and any of those statements resonated with you or if you yourself are navigating some form of imposter syndrome in your studies this video is for you, as I will be sharing some of my experiences with imposter syndrome as an engineering student, and some of the things that help me to combat, or at the very least, lessen the feeling of imposter syndrome. So whether you find value in the insight that I'll be sharing, or you just find comfort in me sharing my stories and experiences, I do hope that this video somewhat helps you out. So my imposter syndrome experiences in engineering really started before I even got into university. And it started when I was preparing for my application for UBC. Like any curious person, I searched online for videos and anecdotes about what some people's personal profiles and grades looked like before they applied. And after looking at that, I realized I was nowhere near qualified to get into UBC engineering just because I saw these other students who had like 95% averages or the captains of their robotics teams in their schools already had personal projects to their name and then a ton of extracurriculars on the side. Myself on the other hand, I only had a 92% average. I wasn't the captain or the team lead of anything at all, and none of my extracurriculars were engineering related as well. And even when I did get my acceptance letter into UBC, I honestly thought that it was just all luck and that it wasn't due to my actual accomplishments that I listed in my personal profile. So honestly, this was kind of a reason why I made the how I got into UBC engineering video so many years ago so that people could see the bare minimum of what UBC expected to get into engineering. Obviously, standards have changed nowadays, so I honestly think that if I applied with what I had in high school today, I probably would not have got in. Fast forward to first year, and I was somehow feeling more and less imposter syndrome at the same time. Now, what do I mean by this? On one hand, yes, I did meet and heard of a lot of people who were top of their classes in high school, had 97 plus percent averages, took as many AP classes as they physically could, were involved in a ton of extracurriculars, and were walking into first year with thousands of dollars of scholarships under their belt. But that was to be expected given that engineering at university brings in some of the brightest and smartest minds from across the country and also internationally as well into one place. And well, throughout the first year as well, I was really envious of those students who managed to maintain high grades. We're talking like basically no little to no drop from their high school averages while also participating in design teams and student life events and still doing their own stuff on the side. Meanwhile, I was just struggling to get by in all of my classes. Like, how are these people so cracked? So justifiably, I often felt like I didn't deserve to be in UBC engineering and that if these people had already accomplished so much by this point in their life, 
What did I have to offer? On the other hand though, UBC Engineering was a big eye-opener for me in that I actually also met so many other people who I felt like I could really form a genuine connection with. People that, yes, were high achievers, they also got top of their class and had a lot of extracurriculars, but were also people that I didn't feel like I had to prove anything of myself in order to just talk with them or be friends with them. And having these friends really helped me to get through a notoriously brutal first year of engineering. So I honestly have so much to be thankful for. They really made me feel like I wasn't a fraud who just mistakenly got into UBC engineering somehow, but rather just a fellow UBC engineering student who worked hard to get to where I was. So moving on to second year, although I did become a lot more comfortable with myself as an engineering student, second year definitely brought out stronger feelings of imposter syndrome at times, mainly related to two things. Firstly, feeling really behind, and second, just questioning whether I belonged in electrical engineering. One of the first things that I noticed when I met a bunch of new people in the new electrical engineering cohort was that everyone seemed to have done so much more than me in their first year. Whether that was being on a design team, doing personal projects, or even just doing summer courses to get ahead in the course load, I felt like I was just really behind others and not cut out to be an ELEC. This also ties into me questioning whether I actually belonged in electrical engineering or not, as second year was a very academically challenging year for me. Like, it was the most number of credits that I'd taken in one year, 42 credits to be precise. And I was really worried if I was A, actually qualified to be in ELEC and B if people would find out that I was just not also not qualified to be in ELEC and that I wasn't a great student to be there and these feelings definitely showed when I got rejected from the co-op program in second year and I saw so many others within and also in different programs get into the co-op program. So because of this, it really motivated me to actually lock in and start polishing up my resume for the next year when I would apply for the co-op program again. So I joined a design team, I survived second year electrical engineering, barely, and spent the entire summer producing the This Is Second Year UBC Engineering video series and that project I'm actually very proud of and definitely has a special place in my heart as something to stand out from a lot of other people. All right, and then third year rolled around and this was really the year that I had to start thinking about searching for internships as I actually did get into the co-op program this time and I had 16 months after my third year that I had to fill up with internships. But when I was talking with other people who either had done previous internships or who had already received job offers for next summer or for a January start, I couldn't help but have noticed that most people were getting jobs at, first of all, well-known and prestigious companies, but also that their roles were very technical in nature and very applicable to electrical engineering. And even though I did get an internship, which is where I'm working right now at Ontario Power Generation, it did make me question whether people would think of me as a fake electrical engineering student just because my role at Ontario Power Generation was a lot less technical in nature inherently. And at a company that not many people in BC really knew about. So yet again, feeling like an imposter even in third year. And then just fast forwarding, most recently starting my first internship was a very scary experience as well. At the start, I was constantly wondering if I was actually qualified enough to be here, if they actually made a mistake in hiring me or not 
or if my coworkers would think of me as someone who just wasn't fit to work there. And because it's a more corporate environment where I work, even the smallest interactions can make a difference in the opportunities that come your way. So there have been times when I've felt quite on edge while I've been at work and ended up focusing on not screwing up rather than trying to learn as much as I can and also provide my ideas as well. All right, with oh, with that little bit of life lore out of the way from the last four years, that brings us to the here and now. So we've got all these feelings of self-doubt and that we don't deserve the success that we've achieved as engineering students. What do we do about it? Well, here are some of the things that helped me to navigate imposter syndrome throughout my undergrad so far and that I hope can help you as well. The first step to any problem is to recognize and acknowledge that it exists. It took me a while to realize that imposter syndrome is a totally normal feeling to have, especially as engineering students. We're naturally high achieving people and we can often burden ourselves with the expectation of knowing everything or being the smartest in the room. So taking some time to think about why you feel like an imposter in certain situations can really help to put into perspective what you're actually feeling. Speaking of perspective, if you are feeling symptoms of imposter syndrome, I would also take some time to reflect on just how far you've come and what you've accomplished so far. Us engineering students were always looking at that next thing, that next homework assignment we need to do, that next midterm we got to study for, that next project that we need to get done. But we rarely ever take a chance to step back and just look at how far we've come. Think about the tough courses that you survived the insane projects that you completed, the cool shit that you've built in engineering so far, or just the fact that you are studying in one of the most academically challenging disciplines that are out there today. It may help you to realize that you are doing a lot better than you think you are. Another path you could take is to use imposter syndrome as a motivator, but only up until a certain point. As I shared earlier, after being rejected by the co-op program in second year and feeling much more behind compared to everyone else in my cohort, that was really my wake up call to lock in and push myself to become a more involved engineering student. But I say only to a certain extent because this could lead to a feedback loop where you keep trying to do stuff to improve yourself, um, to catch up to others, but you may end up just feeling burnt out after all of that, after you keep chasing, but you're not achieving what you think you should be at. So do take this one with a grain of salt, but I will say that it did help to give that little kickstart for me to get me out of the hole that I dug myself into. Also, having a really good group of friends can either subside or completely eliminate feelings of imposter syndrome altogether. I've come to realize that a good group of friends will never, and I mean never, make you feel like an imposter in any situation. So, put yourself out there and find your community that will be with you through the best and the worst times in engineering. And lastly, this is probably the most difficult thing to do when there's so much comparison out there, either in social media or just the other students in your cohort, but do your best to focus on your goals and the path that you want to take. For example, even though I kept seeing people who were getting much more technical internships than me, either in hardware design and ASIC verification, I had to keep reminding myself that that was not the path that I wanted to take and that my path was in a different direction. If you're struggling to figure out what your path is, I would actually start to think about what paths you don't want to take. I find that it's really difficult 
to decide at this point in your life when you're so young exactly what you want to do for who knows the rest of your life so I find it a lot easier to set my boundaries on what I didn't want to do in order to guide me in the direction that I would actually be content with. If you've watched or listened to my guest appearance on my friend Sophie's podcast channel, um, I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. Uh, when she asked me about how I ended up choosing electrical engineering, that decision was made mostly based on what I absolutely knew that I didn't want to do, mainly coding. So this may not work for everyone, but if you don't know where to start when thinking about what path you want to take, I would start there. And those are just some of my experiences with imposter syndrome as an engineering student and some of the things that I've done to at least somewhat subside the feeling. Even though I have become a lot more comfortable with myself in many situations nowadays, it definitely took me a lot of time to get over my imposter syndrome and I still experience it to this day. So hopefully this video just goes to show that these feelings are completely normal as an engineering student and that you're probably doing a lot better than you think you are. Anyways, as always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value or you just enjoyed hearing some of my stories and experiences, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.